Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Good Friday service. Um, a couple of notes about the service before I begin. Um, first, um, in order to try to decrease the amount of anti-Semitism that we are repeating in this story, I am using a version of the Gospel of Mark that I have translated myself. So the language might be different than you expect. Hopefully, it will provide you with new insights into this story and will be something that will help you contemplate uh, Jesus's journey towards the cross in a new and different way. The traditional Good Friday service, when we do it in a worship space, um, we, we try to use Christian art that is much more diverse. However, because we are solely live streaming today's worship service, we are limited due to copyrights to images that are in the public domain that are pre-1925 or that I can purchase the rights to. And so um, regretfully, a number of the images that are shown are, are lacking the full diversity of, of images of Jesus's death that normally I would wanna bring to you all. Um, but hopefully these, these images will provide us with a beautiful meditation of the, the death of Christ in these strange and unusual times. The other thing that typically happens in a Good Friday service is at the end of a service, the altar has all of the items taken off of it in a rather dramatic gesture that is done in silence. And people are allowed to sit and wait as long as they would like with that image. I'm in my living room. So in my living room, taking everything down is going to be less meaningful than if we were in a worship space. So instead, what I will do in this service is leave the final slide up for you so that you can ponder it for a period of time. It will be in silence. It might seem unusual to some people who are gathered, but that's okay. That's just kind of how the Good Friday service happens. And then, um, so the text will begin with where we ended last night at the Last Supper and the reading of the text uh, will end with Jesus's death. And then tomorrow's worship service at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time will pick up with uh, what happens next in the story. So let us begin, take a second, calm your hearts and your minds for worship and take a few deep breaths. But after rising, I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, even if I shall be caused to stumble, I will not. Jesus says to him, I really, really mean it. When I tell you this very night before the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times. Beyond excessively, Peter said, even if it is necessary that I die with you, I will never disown you. Likewise, all of his learners said this. Poof. They were in a place called Gethsemane. Jesus says to his learners, sit here while I pray. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John with him. And Jesus began to be utterly afraid and deeply depressed. Jesus says to Peter, James, and John, grieved and excessively sorrowful, is my life, spirit, mind, and soul, even to death. Be present here and keep awake. Having gone forward a little, Jesus fell on the ground and prayed that if 
it is in God's power that this hour might go away from him. Jesus said, Abba, Father, all these things are in your power. Remove this cup away from me. Do not give me what I desire, but what you desire. Poof. Jesus finds Peter, James, and John asleep and says to Simon Peter, Sleeping? Are you not able to stay awake one hour? Wake up and pray that you will not rise into temptation. Certainly your life, spirit, mind, soul is willing, but your flesh is impotent. Again, having gone away, Jesus prayed, saying these same words. Having returned, Jesus again found Peter, James, and John sleeping. Their eyes were heavy, and they did not know how to answer Jesus. Jesus poofs a third time and says to them, continue sleeping. Refresh, it is enough. Poof, the hour. See, I will be delivered into the hands of social, religious, and political outcasts and rule breakers. It's unclear if anyone was allowed to sleep before Jesus said, rise, let us go. See, the one who is delivering me up is near. Bang. As Jesus is speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrives with a great riot, carrying swords and clubs. The riot was sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Judas had given those with him a sign, saying to them, I shall kiss him, seize him, and lead him away safely. Poof. Bang. Drawing near to him, Judas saw, or Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, Rabbi, and earnestly kissed him. The riot beat Jesus with their hands and seized him. But one present drew a sword, and in a sting like a scorpion, cut a slice off of another man's ear. In response, Jesus said to the captors, you come with, with, come out with swords and clubs to catch me like a robber. And every day I was with you teaching in the temple and you did not seize me. Your actions are accomplished, accomplishing the scriptures. Escaping all the learners vanished. One young man who was following Jesus covered his naked body with only a linen cloth. He was seized, but escaped by abandoning his linen cloth and running away naked. The rioters carried Jesus away to the high priests. All the chief priests, elders, and scribes were assembled. Peter followed Jesus from a very great distance. During the questioning, he was within the court of the high priest, sitting with the officers and warming himself in the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin desired that Jesus be put to death because of his testimony, but they could not find a reason to. It was really obvious that they were using false evidence and contradictory testimony against Jesus. We heard him saying, I will destroy this temple made with hands. And in three days, I will build another not made with hands. Again, it was really clear that their testimony did not agree. Rising up. Their high priest questioned Jesus, saying, Don't you have any answers to their testimonies against you? But Jesus was calm and quiet like water. 
and he chose not to speak and answered nothing. Again, the high priest questioned Jesus, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed? And Jesus replied, I am. You shall see me sitting at the right hand of power and poofing with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest violently tore his clothes and said, what need have we for further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. You have your proof. And they all judged him to be deserving of death. Some of the priests began to spit on Jesus, blindfolded him, wrapped him with their fists, told him, prophesy. And the officers nearby struck him with the palm of their hand. Peter in the court below was with one of the maids of the high priest who saw Peter warming himself. After seeing him, the maid says, you were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But Peter disavowed Jesus. I know not nor even understand what you are talking about. Peter escaped out of the vestibule in front of the court and the cock crowed. The maid had an intuition about Peter and again began to say to those milling about nearby, he is one of them. Again, Peter disavowed. A little later, those standing by again told Peter, truly, you are one of them. You are a Galilean. It's obvious because of your accent. Peter began to curse or vow under penalty of execution. I do not know this man whom you are talking about. The second time a cock crowed and Peter remembered the word that Jesus said to him before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And reflecting on it, Peter sobbed loudly. Bang. In the morning, the chief priests with the elders, scribes and the whole Sanhedrin carried and tied up Jesus and brought him to Pilate. Pilate questioned Jesus, you are the king of Jews? Jesus answered, so you say. The chief priests were a lot, but not all of them, accusing him. Again, Pilate questioned Jesus, saying, will you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. Jesus never answered. Pilate admired and marveled at Jesus. At the feast, Pilate dismissed one prisoner, whomever they asked. There was a prisoner called Barabbas who was bound up with other insurrectionists in a popular uprising. Barabbas had committed murder. The riotous crowd screamed and begged Pilate to let one of the prisoners go. Pilate answered them saying, do you desire that I should release the king of the Jews? Pilate asked this knowing that if the chief priests had delivered Jesus to him because they were jealous, but the chief priests incited the riotous crowd and demanded that Barabbas be released to them. Pilate then asked the riotous crowd, what then do you desire I do to the one you call the king of the Jewish people? What evil or harm did Jesus commit? The riotous crowd excessively screamed, impale him on a cross. Pilate, swayed by the crowd to do what pleased them, released Barabbas. He also delivered up Jesus and whipped him publicly so that he might be impaled on a cross. The whole squad of soldiers led Jesus away within the court, which is the praetorium. They put purple on Jesus and placed on him a thorny braided crown. They saluted him, hail king of the Jewish people. They pummeled his head repeatedly with a reed and spat on him and prostrated in homage. After they mocked him, they stripped him of the purple and clothed in his own clothes so they could impale him on a cross.
The soldiers compelled Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was passing by on his way from the field to carry Jesus' cross. They brought Jesus to Golgotha, which is translated skull place. They offered Jesus a drink of medicated myrrh mixed with wine, but he did not take it. After impaling him on the cross, they divided Jesus's clothes and cast a lot on them to decide who would take each. It was the third hour when they impaled him on the cross. There was an inscription of his crime written up, the king of the Jewish people. With him, they nailed to the cross two robbers, one at the right and one to the left of him. This fulfilled the scripture which says, with the lawless and wicked, he was inventoried. Those passing by spoke ill of him, shaking their heads heads and saying, ah, you who would destroy the temple in three days, build it, heal, save yourself, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests mocked him amongst themselves with scribes and said, Jesus healed and saved others himself. He has no power to heal or save. Messiah, king of Israel, come down from the cross so that we may see and Trust you. Even those impaled on the cross with him taunted him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land for a half hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus screamed in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Those who were near enough to Jesus heard him said, see, he calls Elijah. Someone run, ran and filled a sponge with vinegar, sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to Jesus to drink saying, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus screamed and then died. The veil of the temple was violently torn in two from top to bottom. Having seen his death, he heard and heard his scream. A centurion standing guard opposite Jesus said, truly this man was the son of God. There were women watching from an excessively far distance, among whom was also Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and the younger Josie and Salome. These women had also been with Jesus in Galilee. They followed him and deaconed him, almost always came with him to Jerusalem. It was already evening on the day of preparation before the Sabbath. Poof. Joseph, who was from Arimathea, an honorable member of the Sanhedrin, and was himself waiting for the realm of God, courageously went to Pilate and begged for Jesus' body. Pilate wondered if Jesus was in fact dead so quickly. So he called the centurion and questioned him. After confirming with the centurion, Pilate graciously bestowed the body to Joseph. Joseph brought a linen cloth took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped Jesus' body in the cloth and laid him in a tomb, which was cut out of rock and rolled a stone in front of the door of the tomb.
Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where Jesus was laid. After the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome brought spices in order to anoint his body. <laughs> 